So let's get into like, how the hell do you do this? Uh, what, how, what are the options? You know, I'm, I don't want to be a consultant and just say, here's all your problems. <laughs> how yeah. do I actually want to be able to solve it? So first let's talk about kind of the strategies on um, building. So could you unpack this just a little bit? Yeah. So when you think about building or having network as a service, as an offering, you've got two options. Well, really you have three. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Three is to do nothing. Yeah. That's not why we're here today. Right. <laughs> we don't have time to unpack that in and of itself right. today. Um, Wait to die, right? That's, that's right. an option. That is okay. an option. Yeah. That's right. When we look at the two you have, um, you can choose to resell a program that somebody else has built out and is really making margins and revenue off of, or you can build your own program and be the one that benefits from that and have that direct connect out to your customer. So when we look at um, when you decide to resell a program, this isn't a bad option, right? If you have the resources and this makes sense for your business, this is an okay option and people do it all the time. Um, but when you do this, you're taking the margin stack and it's fundamentally changing. It is being allocated out to the manufacturer, the vendor that's delivering this, that you're just reselling. Okay. So if Checkpoint were to build some fantastic as a service model, yep. we would manage that offering and you as the MSP would sell it out to your customers. The margin in this hypothetical situation, this shifts. This is now Checkpoint's margin where Checkpoint is making that money, right? Yep. Again, not a bad option. We do this kind of business every day, but it's different. Your other option then, what can you do if that's not what you want to do? Um, in reverse is to see where you can focus on building out your own and where you can see those profits. This is where the importance of a network as a service program um, being built by you, the MSP, that's where the service happens. That's where the service delivery happens between you and your customer. And this is where it should happen. This is what makes you sticky, keeps that customer attention. All those great things Phil just talked about yeah. by delivering this, creating this and, and, um, differentiating yourself in this manner, this is where you build that customer base that you're looking for. Yeah. So I, I, I got to pipe in here just because I have such strong opinions. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I, I've seen, you? <laughs> uh, you know, I know, I don't even know this, but I actually do. Um, I think Ms. Rami would say potentially too strong. Uh, <laughs> that's a personal problem. Um, so a couple things here. So I obviously as a VAR and MSP for 15 years, um, there's a lot of manufacturers that are coming out and they're offering essentially their own programs. And I'm not going to mention any manufacturers by names, but there's several of them that raised a lot of capital recently. And what they're doing is they're telling the traditional MSP or VAR to resell their program. And, and again, nothing wrong with that. I agree, I agree with, um, I agree with you in, in your approach is there's nothing wrong with that. Just understand what you're doing is a really right. important part. And what you're doing is you're saying, I'm not going to be the provider. I'm going to resell somebody else's program. They're going to be the provider. And so I'm, and I'm willing to do that. I'm now a broker uh, of a relationship instead of the relationship owner. And, and, and so there's two significant differences. One is I'm changing my profit structure as a company because I'm no longer reselling products and things like that. I'm now giving that away and I'm reselling you know, that or whatever. But the biggest problem I have with it is the relationship problem. And that, and that I believe if you're on this call and you're of our MSP, you should own that customer relationship and you likely have already owned that for several years. And so giving that up is really the, the if, if I was a VAR uh, still, uh, I would say, nope, I'm going to own the relationship. <laughs> it's my customer. You know, I, you know, so I would have a with it. So I agree with this kind of approach. Now you as an executive with a manufacturer, you have to be a little bit torn uh, between the two models. Do you have kind of a, a preference on, on how you think about the problem? Uh, a preference, no. I think they both have their own uh, applicability based on the type of business that we're doing. Um, as we work with companies to build out go-to-market strategies and service delivery, it's heavily weighted in this area where they're differentiating, they're owning the relationships, they're right. building out the offerings. And the customer in, in most of these situations like I said, don't know it's checkpoint, right? right? It's powered by checkpoint, but right. it's really the the partner that is putting their name and 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 their branding and their reputation around it to deliver out. It's it is important in in those situations that they have that relationship and that direct connect with the partner. 
we're there on the back end supporting everything that they do. I love it. Okay. All right. So now let's, I want to go into the, as I'm assuming if you're on the call, um, you are here to learn about how to build a program. And so uh, for context here, so I, I owned a security for 15 years as of our MSP. The last five years, we spent it trying to figure out how do we take a network um, and package it to the customer essentially on a consumption basis. And we had all sorts of problems uh, doing that. Um, and so I want to talk about kind of the five things. So if you're if you're thinking about doing this, let me tell you the things you got to figure out essentially as a as an IT company. Um, the first thing is you have to have some sort of customer experience, and I'm talking specifically about a customer portal. And and what I mean by that is um, if you're let's say you're reselling a vendor, uh, whether it's, you know Checkpoint, you wouldn't want your customer necessarily logging in to the management console, if you will. You really want them logging into your customer console, if you want to think about it. And so think about when you buy something from Amazon, when you buy something from, let's say, even an ISP, uh, like a Spectrum or whomever, uh, you're logging into a portal, you're opening service. X. So you have to rethink your customer experience and what that needs to look like. And it needs to be yours. It needs to be built around you and the service you provide uh, to the customer. The second thing is, and this powers kind of the customer portal side, is you really have to have a connected tech stack. And, and what's really interesting about a lot of these, you know, we're talking about customer experience and, uh, you know, what the customers expect. And what's really interesting, if you go inside of, uh, of our MSP and you just ask, like, tell me about how your systems are working. Are they, are they integrated together? Does your CRM talk to your ITSM? Does your ITSM talk to your PSA? What we find is that it's, it's very, very fragmented. And so, um, you, we really have to build this connected stack. And I don't mean just internally. I also mean with partners like a checkpoint, which is why we're here uh, talking to you, is the, the, uh, the service provider, like you said earlier, the, cost, the, the MSP facing the customer has to be connected to checkpoint on the back end. But to the customer, it's essentially one experience. And that comes with that kind of uh, fully integrated tech stack. And then the, the, the third problem that's... that's um, I think it's somewhat obvious, but something that that uh, maybe people don't think a, a tremendous amount about is you really have to integrate the finance into the workflow of your sales team. So if you think about, again, how you buy a house or buy a car, in those industries, 85% of the transactions are financed in some way. And the forecast in the actual uh, IT uh, world is actually 75% of everything that customers buy will be subscription-based in the future. And so we have to start thinking about how do we embed essentially that whole process um, into the workflows. And then the, the fourth kind of big problem is, uh, since we're talking about problems, is you've got to have what's called configure price quote or CPQ software that's really built around selling on subscription. And I've, I've had so many conversations this week um, with, with large VARs who are trying to build out these types of practices. Some of them are hundreds of millions in, and one was actually well over a billion dollars in revenue. And their biggest problem was, how do I get my team to quote this? Because they've been quoting selling, they've been quoting firewalls for 20 years. How do we get them to sell services from my company? <laughs> and so that, that's a big problem. And, and then the, the fifth one is the services lifecycle. And what, what I mean by this is, like I said earlier, you're no longer just selling a, a point solution. You're now owning the relationship for 60 months. And if you own the relationship for 60 months, it's no longer enough just to say, oh, I can go and install it and configure it. What about supporting it on the back end? And what about offering you know, updates on the software and things like that to keep that, that system up to date? And so you have to think about the entire life cycle of, let's say, a, a checkpoint security solution, whether it's a firewall or endpoint technology. Um, you've got to think about that entire life cycle of deploying it and managing it. And this can create some kind of holes for the IT companies. Do you have any comments on that? Or Yeah, I was just going to say, Phil, it's it's really interesting when we go in and talk to partners and they excel in one, two, three of these different areas, right? They have it down. They've been doing it the same way um, for a long time. Um, and they they just, they don't need help. Um, but when we talk about these five areas, all together in unity, yeah. Yeah. Um, things tend to quickly fall apart um, and not be as rosy as they may seem. 